Hello everybody, uh, I just uh, would like to let you know it's a beautiful sunny day in Northport and uh, my daughter and I just took a walk out uh, down to the bay and noticed a lot of fishing boats on the bay and that gave me an idea for a story I would like to share with you and a drawing I'd like you to join me in as we explore warmer waters in southern places. So grab a pencil and a piece of paper and um, be ready to draw along. It'll be a lot of fun. This works for all grade levels. Uh, even grown-ups can do this. So be sure to join your kids if you'd like to, uh, like to experience the adventure. Look forward to drawing with you. All right, if you have your pencil and paper handy, we're going to use a horizontal format here. Just have it arranged uh, sideways like this so we can do a, a landscape. Actually, this is going to be a seascape format. Our story is going to take place above the water and below the water. So we'll be doing some fancy, um, uh, fancy dividing of this uh, format here for us. But we're going to start out very simply uh, with a dot in the corner. This is how I begin most of my drawings, and uh, it's a fun way to loosen up a little bit. It just uh, lets us create a frame around our picture and, and um, loosen up by just drawing simple shapes, as simple as this simple dot here that starts our project. And from that, we're going to wiggle a little bit along. We're going down in tropical waters where pirates used to roam. And, and uh, so we're going to draw lines that look a bit like waves here. We can draw lines coming down here that look like the edge of an old treasure map, come across the bottom and up here to the starting point, but not quite to that point. And what we have is a uh, wiggly border with open spaces. Uh, you often hear about thinking outside of the box. In this case, we're going to be working inside the box from each of these openings and create tears as though this was once nailed up on the wall of a, uh, of a ship's uh, cabin and um, maybe in a storm the captain grabbed the map off and tore away the corners there and over time it got frayed and tattered. And uh, each one of these little wiggles that we draw, these little chips and and shapes makes this look more frayed, more tattered, more old, and more like it has a story to tell. The next thing we're going to do is make another dot just about like that one. And we're going to draw a little slower now. Uh, in the first case, we just drew wiggles merrily along. Now we're going to slow down and kind of copy those wiggles. So we end up with a line that looks roughly parallel to it. Obviously, you can see I'm not sticking with that perfectly. We're just coming along and making a frame as though maybe it was freehand drawn long ago. And it comes down here and it just gives us a, a chance to draw a little slower, maybe control a little bit better. I'll get better as I go. And um, come along here and just um, create a frame that could, could have been drawn long ago with a quill pen or uh, on, on a piece of parchment. And now that's all frayed and tattered, both of these borders look pretty pretty weathered and worn. That was so much fun, I think we'll do it again. I'd like you to make another dot right up here, but very close by. And we're going to create a picture within a picture here, giving us a chance to look at two different parts of the story. Uh, this will be kind of like the star field of our American flag. It just comes down about this far and over like this. We don't need a whole lot of room for this part of the story. And it's probably going to be the last thing we get around to on it, or one of the last things as we go. Uh, we have this uh, now small box, and what I'd like to do is uh, copy this narrow border we have at the top and the left-hand side with a line about the same width apart from the box that comes down here and up here, however you choose to draw that. So uh, once you have that, you, again, you notice the lines are a little wiggly and warped, and, and that's fine. Time has passed, and this is old and frayed and... I'm 70 years old. I'm kind of getting that way. It's kind of like the way I draw nowadays. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to um, uh, come over here. And I wanted, this is going to be the main character of our story for a while. And I'm going to draw a line that starts, oh, right about, uh, I'm going to start a little lower than that. I'm going to start right about here. I'm going to draw a line that comes out like this and sweeps up. So it looks like a smile curve. Beautiful sunny day off on an adventure. And this is the boat that's going to take us there. This is a boat that has a, a bow that comes down like that, kind of straight down, but at an angle, the straight line at an angle. And way at the after end of the boat, we have the transom, and it comes down at a slight angle, and then it tucks in in this little area called the tumble home. 
There's a Samson post coming up here at the bow. The stem actually sticks up above the planking of the sides of the boat, and there's there's another another couple cleats back in here that come up at the stern. And there's a little line that comes up here, raising up the bow slightly at that point, and even up in here a little higher. Right about here, there's a the front of the pilot house rises up like this, and then there's a long line that comes back and angles down for the roof line of this, this boat, and then a line that drops down here like this. You notice the bow is raised up high to help deflect the waves Boat is, the boat is crashing out into the water. Um, and um, the pilot house windows wrap around here like this. I'm just gonna draw a little schematic diagram of this boat. It's the main character, but it's far away and we don't see all the details exactly clear, but we get enough of the idea here. There's a roof on top of that pilot house and it sticks out a little bit over the front like that. And along the side of the boat, right in here, there's a fresh water tank for the drinking water. And there are a couple windows up above. This one goes into the captain's quarters. This one goes into the, uh, this one goes into the galley. And uh, then right here, the door goes into the pilot house, right up here next to those windows. There's a window in that. And there's another window here that also goes into the pilot house in the uh, chart room area. Or at least this is the way it was on a boat I was on named the Donald Lee back in uh, back in 1960. Uh, what was that? 67, 66 and 67. Um, I had gotten a job on a boat down there, a shrimp boat, and that is what we're drawing, a shrimp trawler. And uh, this was my home for four months, so I got to know it pretty well. There's a uh, break of the waves at the bow as the boat parts through it, and then you have this, this wake pushing up along the side of the boat, and we'll trail this off this way a little bit, bring it down as though it's coming towards us, and then another one back in here, you see the wakes of the boat, and then at the stern it'll trail off kind of like that, just to give us a sense of motion of the boat moving through the water. Uh, with the tides rising and falling each day, we have uh, tires like these that, that uh, line up alongside the pilings, and the boat will rub against them as it rises and falls with the tide. And we put those here, just, these are just automotive tires left over and they're hanging, uh, hanging off uh, cleats on the inside. And uh, it's part of the decor, also a very functional part. And we'll make a, a small line here, if we make a thin line here if you can cut one in like that that shows the railing along the deck. And then down below it, there's another one. Sometimes the space between these railings is, uh, is uh, are these lines are, um, are painted different colors. It might be, generally they're white, and, but they might have different colors if you choose. Your favorite color here, maybe this is red and white below, but um, each company has its own style and, and uh, individual owners have their own style as far as how they're going to, uh, um, how they're going to, fit out their boat and paint it and what they want to do with it. Back here, there's a, a line here that goes down to the engine room. There's a hatch in here you don't see. There's a small opening right here called the scupper, and this is where when the nets were pulled in, uh, all of the, uh, the, the things that we didn't want, things that we didn't want to keep, uh, would be shoveled through the scupper there out into the water or thrown over if they were sharks or other uh, stingrays and that sort of thing. Um, up on top is a, on the boat I was on, there was a little raft up here. It was an inflatable raft, and that became my bedroom that summer, my bed. I slept up there unless it was raining. Otherwise, I was supposed to sleep down a little hatch in the forepeak here, uh, which was directly connected back in towards the, uh, not only the engine room, but also the, uh, the cargo hold, so it, it smelled pretty bad, so I just chose to sleep up there. Uh, right here is the mast sticking up, and the mast is actually, we're going to simplify this, it's actually a kind of a H-shaped uh, structure that uh, holds these long booms, uh, holds them in place when it's in port and they're raised up and alongside it. But we have these booms coming out like this. There's one on this side, and we'll make this one come up like a letter V shape, make it a little shorter here like that. We'll have this boat actually in the process of trawling or as has actually brought in, brought, bringing in the nets. Right. 
Um, you have, uh, I'm going to have some, just draw some lines for cables in here for right now, just to kind of get an idea of that. And we're going to have right down in here a bag hanging like this. This will be the trawl bag. And just put some crisscross lines on that to make it look like it's, uh, like it's full. And it's held up and brought in, and it hovers over the deck. And um, our job on the boat, actually there were two of us on the boat all summer, the captain and myself. Captain was a Georgia man born and raised here, Joe Lucas, and, and um, so that'll be me, and he's over here. We'll have him up on the bow here like that. He was a fascinating guy to work with. He had been shrimping all his life, and uh, he, he knew the waters of uh, Thunderbolt, Georgia, and Osaba Island, and Jekyll Island, and all these other places. We tra trolled all the way from Hilton Head, South Carolina, down into northern Florida, waters of northern Florida. Uh, and uh, the the net had chafing gear on it, a uh, little little uh, uh, almost like uh, shreds of used car lot flags, uh, just kind of hanging down, or um, and uh, just enough to keep the net from catching on coral and that sort of thing as it's being dragged along the sand flats. And there's a pull cord down here, just a, a, a line that you pull to uh, open the bag, and which causes everything in it to sloosh across the deck. And uh, so, and after that happened, you'd, you'd first show the sharks off and show other things that were large that might uh, uh, get in the way, and, and then you'd start gathering shrimp and throwing them in baskets and, and eventually down into the cargo hold, which was iced and shovel ice on the cargo, and we'd be out there for three, four days and then come in uh, usually for the weekend, um, Captain Lucas would go home to his his house in uh, in Thunderbolt and uh, and eat uh, eat steak and and uh, I'd stay on the boat and I'd eat seafood all the seafood I could uh, store in the other compartments down in the cargo hold. We picked up just about every kind of fish and shrimp and crab and things. It was it was a really a dream summer for somebody who likes being on boats and doesn't mind working hard. Uh, right across here, I'm going to draw a line, and we've got to kind of stage this a little bit. I'm going to draw a line that comes down here, wiggles a bit, and then comes back like this, just a line that comes straight back. We're going to draw a spit of land sticking out here. This will be one of the outer islands, uh, Tybee Island maybe, and then over here we come out like that and draw another one that's further away. Just see how we raise that one lower and closer, a little larger, and one a little further back. And then from here, I'm just going to take a line. I'm going to go through here like this and kind of carry it as though we're going off into the open ocean off in the distance here. If you want to add one more island, you might put it over here like that. It's a beautiful place. Uh, just uh, you look out across the water and these islands is, um, it has a very warm, genteel south kind of a feel about it. Just an amazing place to be. If you have one shrimp boat here, you might have another one off in here somewhere. Draw a little little boat over here. Maybe it's a smaller fishing boat. Yeah, we'll draw this so as a smaller rig. A lot of individuals would come out and they'd drag nets and might be crabbing or shrimping and just have a small boat over here like this just to kind of suggest uh, there's more to it. You're not alone on the water out there, though sometimes it feels like it. You've got a lot of other shrimp. And if the shrimp are, shrimp are really running in an area... Um, people will they'll call out and say you catching anything and the captain will say no not nothing here just just pulling up the nets and and next thing you know they'll see the nets come up with uh, something in it and they'll be right next to us we have a whole bunch of boats all together right up here I'd like you to draw some big billowing clouds in the sky and make this look like a beautiful ocean day with clouds rising up cumulus clouds fair weather clouds like these, the cumulus humulus clouds that kind of break apart when they're, when they're happy and they come together when they get a little uh, heading, heading into a storm. Just draw a few more up there and just think of clouds. And while you're at it, draw some birds. Uh, seagulls everywhere. These seagulls uh, would especially gather as we're coming into port or cleaning the nets at the end of the day. We'd pick out the fish from the nets and and uh, that's, uh, wear a broad hat when you do that and you've got about 100 seagulls flying around you. Uh, so 
fill the air with some seagulls. And that'll give you an idea. I might give you an idea of the sound, too. Imagine the sound of the, the engine, the waves rushing by, the, uh, wind in the, the wind in the sky, the clouds, the call of the seagulls. And just generally a very wonderful kind of environment. Uh, to set the stage a little bit more, we're going to go back to this shore. Um, I'm going to draw some little lines like these sticking up. We'll make this look a little closer than it might be, but I want to get these little lines sticking up so that we can land some of those seagull shapes on top and make them look like palm trees. This is a lush tropical environment. Uh, there's a lot of grassland on these low outer islands here, and uh, a lot of people would raise their raise their cattle or their horses, and... Um, and uh, it was amazing when we'd anchor up sometimes you'd hear dolphins swimming by and gasping, they're blowing their air and, and, uh, and horses neighing on the islands. This was back in the 60s. It's, uh, it's quite different now. The shrimp industry has, uh, has suffered quite a bit. There used to be dozens of ships uh, out at pretty much any time, and now it's, it's uh, a little more sparse, but uh, still, still busy, still, still working. And more bigger boats now. Back then, this, this boat was 54 feet long, which was uh, pretty much standard size, I guess, at that time it was built, and now they're up in the 70s. And, and um, if you want to make it look a little more interesting, make it look like the wind is actually blowing, you can add a little variety up here. Just draw some lines like these that sweep down. And what this does is it not only makes the clouds look lighter, but it makes the sky look darker, and it makes it look like there is wind up here blowing the clouds through the air, kind of like an old-time lithograph or print from long ago. You would very carefully detail in these. I'm going to spread it out, let it get lighter, so we're getting over towards sunlight there. To make the clouds look more full and interesting, uh, I'd like you to add some curves like these, just a few little marks to suggest the roundness of those, of those clouds. By now, I'd like to point out that in this drawing, there are only a couple straight lines. So if you ever find yourself saying, I can't even straight draw a straight line as an excuse for not drawing, um, you'll see how even these straight lines that I tried to draw are a little crooked. Even these are a little off. But generally, well, even the horizon like that, but generally most of the lines in this drawing are wiggles and curves, maybe because we're drawing on a surface that should be covered with wiggly curved objects because it itself is... Um, is old and frayed and warped and tattered and so we're doing just fine right now. What I'd like to do now is uh, take a little uh, a line like here. Okay, we've got this thing. It's almost like a kite shape. So right here, maybe a little above that, I imagine the tail of a kite coming down like this. It's not really the tail of a kite, so I want to keep it off to the side a little bit or up a little bit so it doesn't come right off of that. But now, now you see what we have is we've got the, the light and the sky and the reflections uh, and everything coming down onto this water. And this represents a separation between what's above the water and what's below the water. And if you want, you can fill out these clouds, uh, these wa waves a little bit like this, the, the breaking of the water at the bow. You can add lines like this back in here and just add a little bit more uh, action to that scene. Because uh, we're going to leave that now. We're going to go down below the water here and imagine what it might be like. A good segue for that, and one of the things that I had, had most enjoyed along the, when we were pulling up nets, and it was pretty hard, hot, sweaty work, but there were a lot of things that, that made it pleasant. And one of them was watching the crabs gather along the scuppers or along the, uh, along the rail of the deck, and they would, um, they would somehow find their way to the scupper, and they'd just kind of crab walk. We were sideways along the, uh, along the rail and, uh, and just kind of drop down into that into the water and they'd sink down to the bottom and get back to whatever crabs do. Uh, they'd be a little ways from where they started, but um, I don't think it bothered them. What we're going to do now is come down here and I think, uh, I think what I'd like to do is start with a shape like this. We're just going to begin this. Uh, this is a drawing I like to do with kindergarten, first graders, second graders. Uh, it's an element that we can draw in, in lots of different ways. If they come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, but it'll it'll kind of bring us into this uh, this underwater environment, uh, drawing an animal that is perfectly tuned for this habitat. I'm going to draw a shape that comes like that and that. So we have a shape that looks uh, like a long, if it was joined at the ends, it'd be like a long ellipse kind of a shape. Um, and I'm going to uh, draw a line right here that comes up and... Um, I'm just going to draw this coming down and just draw a line coming back like that and a line up here like this. 
We'll draw an eye right about here. And coming up from behind the head, now let's just, we'll just draw that line here. Draw the gill cover here like that. And then you can draw the dorsal spine sticking up here. And from this, I'd like you to draw a bunch of little curved lines like these to show the webbing of the thin skin between the spines of the back of the fish. Kind of coming down. And different fish have different shapes to their to their uh, fins, and which makes them identifiable. Usually there's a dorsal fin, and then you have the uh, adipose fin or the posterior dorsal fin here. You can draw that down like that. And to stiffen it up and to make it strong enough to help the fish go where it wants to go and steer and and also to impress its mates when it flares its fins out and, or to startle its, uh, startle its predators. Um, think of patterns of color and design you can put in there. Uh, right here we have a small line coming out like that and from that we'll radiate two lines like this and a smaller fin, the pectoral fin that will help it twist and turn quickly in the water as it chases its prey or keeps from becoming that. And way at the end, we have the motor fin. We have the caudal fin or the tail fin that comes out with lines like that. And you can draw more shapes like this. This is kind of a stylized fish. It could be a grouper, a snapper, something like that. Um, these fish have, uh, have a lateral line that runs along here like this. It has to do with its, uh, has, has its, its buoyancy and uh, inflation and also but it's also a good dividing line for us as we're going to create a darker texture on the back and a, a lighter texture in the belly uh, this is that um, camouflage that helps protect it looking down on it would blend into the confusion of the coral reefs and and uh, or this even the sand if it's a that sort of color but uh, when you're looking up at it, another fish looking up at it might not see it as the bright light from the sky coming down through the water would blend in with the lighter belly of the fish. Um, to make this look more like a fish, I'd like you to draw, you can draw these really light if you like. I'm just drawing a bunch of quick wiggles like this and pretending these are scales and you know you can be really neat about it or you can uh, just do it like this is the quick way. Just to add a texture, this could be a combination of the shape of the scale and also the pattern that, uh, that colors that scale. Uh, sometimes on a fish you'll have a pattern on the fins as well and if you draw little lines like these and leave a little flash of white in front of each one like that it makes it look more like there's a, a, a strong spine supporting that web so you leave a little bit of light to make it look more fin-like rather than darken the whole thing in. and back here I'll add a few marks like this. Down below there are still scales, but they might just be little hints like this, one thing or another. One of the things that um, shrimpers want to look out for are coral formations. Uh, the, the shrimp tend to be on, running on, uh, crawling on the sand flats. That's where the nets are, and the nets will drag along the sand flats. And there's there are doors that uh, do, I'll put a door right here like this. These are the doors that are used to spread the nets as the boat is trawling. And, uh, and and they will drag along and there's a chain, a tickler chain between the doors that kicks up the shrimp as the net moves along. It actually kicks them up into the net, which is waiting. Uh, we're going to uh, come over here and draw a shape like this. I just draw a, kind of a coral head like this. We'll put this really close to us now. So, so we're close up underwater and can see this. In this area you have a lot of different creatures. Here's one. And if you're drawing this and you find some part of this picture that you really like, like maybe you like drawing the coral reef, um, take a different piece of paper and try um, putting these shapes together in different ways. You could draw a lump like this for a coral reef. Maybe you want to have all, I'm going to draw a lot of different things on this coral reef, but maybe you want to arrange it differently. You could draw it over here like this or use a piece of paper vertically and try different ways of uh, building these in. But I just want to show some of the other wildlife we have in this picture. This is a, uh, a starfish 
It's an echinoderm. Its uh, stomach is right in the center of it. It goes pretty much right up into its belly. It has a pattern on it, a texture to it, and I'm just going to hint at that texture with little dots like these. If you want, you can put some down below in here that will give it a, um, give it a little more shadow as it's on the top of this coral. You have sponge shapes like this that stick up sort of like thumbs, a thumbnail here actually, that's an opening going down into the sponge. And you can draw a texture on this that shows the porosity of the outside of the sponge and then look down into it here like this, darken that in a little bit. Another thing you find around here are cousins of the starfish. They don't look anything like it, well, much like it. They have a, a shell like an egg, and uh, the shell has holes in it like this. When you find them and they're dead, that's exactly what they look like, and they make beautiful wind chimes and ornaments, and, and you can do lots of creative things with them. Um, but when they're alive, you want to be very careful around them because each of those holes has a spine that sticks up like this, they're very graceful, slow-moving, slow-crawling animals as they kind of move their way along. They like being close to areas where there's a nice current and, and food particles gather and they can easily be grazed upon. These are grazing, pretty much grazing animals. They go along and just kind of eat their way from one place to another as they, and as they crawl. And these, uh, the spines are very sharp and dangerous and they hurt. I know that personally. Um, so you've got to be careful around them. Uh, another thing you'll find is um, oh, sand dollars like these. Just draw little marks on top of ovals here and think of sand dollars. You've probably all had sand dollars and make you feel rich if you draw a bunch of them down here. Another thing you're going to have is seaweed that grows up like this. I'll draw some coming up here like this. I'm not going to take, take it right up to the top, but we'll imagine this going up further back away. And here's another one. I'll draw three different kinds of seaweed here. Um, one of them is pretty much like the, the kind we usually think of with seaweed, a more kelp-like -like seaweed that has leaves that wiggle out one way and then wiggle out the other, wiggle up here like this, and just take these off in different directions. And these kind of all reach out and they flutter about or flow about in the current of the water. Um, another kind is this. Uh, this is where we have whorls of leaves spinning out from the center and they come up like that. Just a, a way of adding a variety and in an environment like this around a coral reef or a really developed or, or a populous area here, not a sand flat which is basically empty but where there's a lot of life teeming here, um, you'll have a, a lot of these and a lot of these and a lot of these. This one here is scribble weed. This is, uh, this is a way that uh, you can draw it this kind of fun. Just think of wild looking leaves like that coming out like this and just kind of go back and forth and scribble your way from the top to the bottom and you end up with a, a, a kind of a seaweed that looks kind of like real seaweed. And you can add little objects on here too to show its complexity. I call this a coral reef uh, because it is. We've got, we're going to have some uh, layers here coming up, and we'll just kind of divide this up. And you can see the layers of coral built one on top of another over time. And there are many reefs, and some of them are hundreds of feet deep, and, and they, uh, they all have uh, layers of coral. And then when it's ground up and becomes sand, it's like coral marl. And within these layers, you'll find fossils and things of previous creatures that lived there if you go down deep enough. Um, but otherwise, you're going to find things along on top of the surface here, too. We've got lots of, lots of different shelled animals here like this. You can draw a bunch of shells here, and mollusks and mussels and uh, mussels, yeah. Would be, and just draw them. And where you have one, you're going to have a lot of them. You're going to have uh, little creatures like these, which are the nemesis of boats. These are barnacles, and they tend to cluster in great communities. And by bringing them right up to the starfish, it's kind of neat because it makes the starfish stand out light against the dark. And um, I'm going to keep it down in this area, and we'll keep it lighter up on the top there. Down below this sand, uh, the, the coral formation itself is a bleached white color, and it sticks up from the sand, which is a more tan sand color, but it's even whiter than 
later than what we think of on the Great Lakes. I think down in here, I want to draw something different. I'm going to draw something coming along in here. This would just be kind of fun to do. We'll draw a line that comes over like that. It's going to come down like that. It's going to come back like this. Notice how it bulges out a little bit and curves around and back. Right here, we'll draw a line that comes over like this and then out just a little bit. Kind of like that. It's like a kind of a backward Z shape or a Z shape. And then we'll come down here like this. Bring it back to right about there. I'd like you to draw a fin that comes down here, a pectoral fin that comes out and drops down. We'll just bring it right in there, kind of. And an eye that's right up close like this, closer to the nose where you can see what it's chasing. And then right about here, a little bit after, behind that, uh, that um, pectoral fin, we'll draw the dorsal fin coming up. And I'm just going to draw this guy, the shark here we're drawing, as a shadow, pretty much the same kind of as camouflage on it, the same kind of shading. It's lighter on the belly here and darker on the back to make it look more round and, and um, menacing like a shark. Um, I'm just going to darken in this fin here like this with straight lines. I'm going to leave the front edge, the leading edge of this fin, a little bit light as it's catching, catching that light. And then to show the roundness of the body of the shark, we'll draw letter C shapes like this that come around. Just curves like that to round it out. With your pencil, I meant to mention this a long time ago, with your pencil you have the option of, of uh, using the side of your pencil to shade. You have all kinds of different ways of applying lines and textures to this drawing that, that it's hard to do with a Sharpie pen like this. If you make a mistake you can also erase it if you want to change it. In this case, I'm kind of drawing it, and if it's not exactly what I want, I just remember for the next drawing to do it a little differently. In this drawing, I'm going to make a line that comes out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start here. This is a trick I like to do in a lot of drawings. I use it in many different ways. I'm going to draw a line that comes out like that, and then back like that. It's almost like um, a ripple of sand or something there. But when we start at one of these points and drop a line down like that, we see that it's more like a reef that drops off into the depths or the distance. And back in here, I'm going to take this one here, come out like this, and we'll just come in and we'll kind of overlap these reefs. That one comes out there, and this comes back like that, and it kind of comes down here, and maybe these... This uh, cut in that reef between the two sections. To make this look more dramatic, I'm going to draw some lines like these that come across like that, and some lines like this that come across, just to darken it in, but leave it light along the edge, the sunlit edge, and this will be even lighter along this edge. Well, kind of. And um, darken that in just to give you more variety down below here. It's just a um, it's amazing how many how many different ocean forms there are along the, the sea floor. And this is just a way of catching a glimpse of some of them. If you can think of something back here that you want to add, um, there's uh, there are all kinds of other things. I, I, I'm going to do it over here. I'm going to put this right here because it's actually kind of closer to us. I'm going to draw a little shape that looks like a football. And a couple eyes there, and a couple claws coming out here and here, and a little paddle like here, and legs coming out there and there. And just have a blue crab walking there. If you have one, you're going to have a dozen or so. It's like a hermit crab's on shore when you're on an island and you think you're all alone, and you hear this uh, the sound of uh, clattering and clacking, and you look over and you see a wave of these hermit crabs coming after you. But, these guys here are blue crabs, and they're beautiful to look at. And we'd catch them, catch them by by the dozens, if not the hundreds, um, as we were trawling. Got some other things I want to put in here. 
that will kind of take us into a whole different realm. And I got to figure out how I want to do that. I think I'm going to do it in a real small scale. I'm going to come back. Uh, I'm going to have to do it differently. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it right here. I'm just going to take it right here like this. We're going to draw something that you you don't see very often. This is just kind of a fantasy thing, but it's something if you've been on the water, on the ocean, you often dream of. Uh, draw a line that comes down like that. Just curves around behind those, behind that seaweed. In fact, I think I'll bring it up here a little bit further and just to add a little more, a little more drama to it. If you draw a line coming down here like this, and then copy that shape that we drew up above it, and draw a little bump here, and then copy that, and the line coming down like this behind that fish. And maybe a line coming down here and out like that. You can add a little shape coming around here and down and around. And another one underneath it, another one underneath it. And this will give you a shape that looks a little bit like the gallery, the quarter gallery of the, uh, the ship that sank here long ago. Of course, in reality, these ships would all be, uh, the wood would be mostly gone or, or, or unless it was preserved in the sand uh, by some miraculous way. It, 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 you, mostly what you find on wrecks like this uh, from long ago is just the, the heavy metal parts, the cannon, the brass, the bronze, and that sort of thing. But back in this day, all along, the coasts of Georgia and Florida, especially down in Florida and the, the Gold Coast as it was, and they, uh, a lot of ships uh, made their way from, from Panama and up, and uh, the Spanish ships uh, with, the, uh, with the gold of the Aztecs uh, would, uh, would find themselves in storms and be dragged across the coral reefs and, um, and their treasures dispersed in the sand. and. Uh, waiting discovery long after, and uh, back in the day, this was uh, this was once a once proud ship, and now it's just kind of a remnant of its former self. I'm going to draw just draw some wiggles up here and think of carving as a grand ship, like like the Black Pearl of Pirates of the Caribbean. That's another drawing I like to do. So if you ever want to draw that one with me, we can draw the Black Pearl in full sail with all of the flags flying and the cannons bristling from the side of the hull and uh, that's coming up one of these days because I like to draw that one. I'm going to darken this rudder in down here just to um, make that fish stand out a little closer. See how that darkness pushes the front of the fish, the fish closer to us and sets this back more into the shadow behind that reef. If you darken this in a little more that works even better so it's kind of snugged away and a little further away from us. On here you might see the uh, stump of the mizzen mast sticking up here and uh, the main mast back in here it might be just a little bit and these would be frayed and tattered maybe uh, if this was back in the day before there were shrimp boats you might even see one of the yard arms here that slipped down the mast as it sank and it's kind of tattered. Another thing you see often on the ocean here along the, along the coast is uh, these, these little crowns of, they look like bubbles floating on the water. They're beautiful. They're kind of a purple color and a little touch of peach or pink working through them. And down below them, you'll see if you get too close, you might even feel the long tendrils that trail behind this Portuguese man of war, this... This very graceful, delicate, beautiful looking creature as they flow in the current of the ocean. And um, they're amazing to look at. They're very uncomfortable to encounter if you get too close. I, I know that feeling too. Um, but they are fascinating to, fascinating to look at. And so that's another little addition here that happened to pop into my mind. Back in the distance, um, I'd like you to draw 
some more of these fish shapes. And we'll have everybody kind of go in the same direction here. They're following the shrimp boat. These guys here are barracuda. Uh, a long time ago, my first encounter with barracuda was swimming off of Key West. And, and um, there were a bunch of shiny, beautiful, shiny looking fish not too far from me and I heard a splashing and one of my buddies was uh, waving at me and say hey man those are barracuda and I had no clue but they didn't bother me a bit they just kind of they always they, they got kind of a sly looking smile to the shape of their mouth too as they're cruising by um, that doesn't look like a barracuda okay but go ahead and just think of these little fish and just of uh, schooling along since we're out of school now with this uh, quarantine thing we're dealing with, um, as, uh, these guys are still in school here, so to speak. And you can put whatever other kind of fish there, and you can add whatever you want to add here. But what I want to do is come up to this part, and this is, um, this is a part where we actually become part of the story that we're looking at. As we've been drawing this picture, I'm sure as I've been telling my part of it, you've been... Uh, linking this to other experiences you've had. Maybe you've been to the ocean. Maybe you've seen these things. Maybe you've seen things that aren't in the picture and you have some room that I don't have here. Go ahead and draw those things. Uh, you could draw pelicans flying overhead here. A lot of pelicans down there. You could draw, draw um, um, different birds flying in the sky. You could draw ibises and, and um, beautiful tropical things or other fish down below. You could draw angel fish and parrot fish and and others. So, but right up here, I'd like you to draw an egg. I'd like you to draw a shape that looks a little bit like the shape of your head. There's my cat pretending to be a seagull. <laughs> and once you have that shape, I'd like you to draw an eye right in the middle of your head, right about here. Looks kind of like a cyclops. If you draw your neck coming down this way, this way from there, and then this way from right about here, you can draw a shoulder over on this side. Looks kind of strange, doesn't it? And another line coming over this way. Notice how this one angles down more. Uh, what I want to do is make it look as though you're a part of this picture. You're looking at the story, not right at us like this. You're going to draw your nose coming out this way. Think of the shape of your nose. And then draw your eyebrow coming out that way and your eye looking over in that direction. And then center your mouth up underneath your nose like this. And now you've got yourself looking at the scene that you're telling the story of. Draw your ear right here like that. And kind of about as high as the eye and close to the mouth there. And, and then um, I'd like you to add the details you want to it. Um, back then, um, I used to wear a hat kind of like this. This is kind of like a Forrest Gump boat. And I use this broad... broad uh, kind of open mesh Panama hat like that, which is especially handy when you're clearing fish from the, uh, from the nets at the end of the day and the seagulls are flying over trying to catch the scraps of fish you're tossing into the air. So I'm just going to draw this mesh like that to help keep, the, uh, keep their thank yous off my head. I'm going to draw my hair coming down like that. And um, I have a mustache and a beard. You probably don't, or maybe you do, but go ahead and draw that. And just whatever you need to do to make it look a little bit like yourself so you can relate to being in this picture. Um, back then, I wore, uh, when we were shrimping, we had uh, these rubberized suits with, uh, like, uh, just to keep the... Um, keep the fish off our the fish and shrimp off our legs or sometimes just just um, just pants and tall boots but I'm going to wear this one here for now and um, sometimes just t-shirts sometimes if it was raining we'd have we'd have uh, rain gear to wear so I'm just going to dress like that for right now and put some eyebrows on there and uh, last thing of all right now is I'd like you to sign your name down below. Sign your Pablo Picasso down here. And uh, put the date on it here. I'm going to put a, a 4, 1, and it's uh, the year 2020, April 1st, April Fools. And there we go. If you'd like to add a title to this, my adventures on the uh, Atlantic, uh, my shrimp boat adventure or something like that, uh, whatever title you want to put up there, go ahead and add to it. 
Uh, if you miss something or if you have spaces that are different, use your imagination and add to it. I can't wait to uh, see some of your pictures. If you'd like to send them to me, um, we'll tell you how to do that, and I'd love to see them. Uh, another thing is you can add color to it. Um, and I want to show you something in a minute here. Um, my um, my favorite part of this is that this drawing is that it takes on so many different ways. I've drawn this drawing or variations of it several hundred times, I'm sure, in schools around the state. Uh, some of them vertically, some horizontally. Some I zoom in on the shipwreck itself, and that's the star of the show. Sometimes I zoom in on the coral reef, and all we do is study the uh, uh, study the life forms of the reef. Uh, but uh, here's one that's a little bit different, and I took the time to add color to it, and uh, that is what it looks like if you take a little extra time. This is colored pencil. Uh, sometimes I paint them. Sometimes um, one of these days I'm going to do them, do one in stained glass, just because uh, I like doing stained glass, and I think it'd be an interesting picture. But um, so go ahead and use your imagination and break out the colors. Uh, whatever you want to do this with, watercolor is great if you have paper that'll handle it, and uh, again, thanks for drawing with me, and I uh, look forward to drawing with you again. Well, have a great day.